Everybody's upset about it. it. Has been ever since they started out. You know, even talking about draining Bonnie three or four years ago. Dan Bosler has been coming to Bonnie Reservoir his whole life. This time, it's to say goodbye. The reservoir is being drained to pay a water debt to Kansas and Nebraska after the U.S. Supreme Court decided Colorado had been using more than its fair share of the Republican River for decades. Hello and welcome to a time capsule. This is another video of my walk arounds of abandoned locations and I mean technically I don't consider this abandoned, I consider this neglected. Because technically it's a wildlife refuge, but it was the Bonnie Lake State Park 12 years ago. And the thing that annoys me about this is it's such a fantastic location, it's so peaceful, the facilities seem nice. I mean, they've been sitting dormant for 12 years, and they look pretty much usable to this day. Before we continue, here's a map of the park still standing. This lake was gigantic. It had almost 2,000 acres of water surface and 15 miles of shoreline. So, I mean, it's a pretty hefty size for a reservoir. And then over here we had the showers, restrooms, you name it, for the campsites. And like I said, I mean, look how nice these buildings are. I mean, they're, they look like they were used yesterday. Just forget the, you know, overgrown bushes and whatnot in front of it. Give it a week, you can clean up, do some work on the parking lots, the roads, Boom, you're ready to go open up this park. What you're seeing here as well is where the water was. And then off on the horizon, you see that darker line of rocks way back there? That is the dam, or was the dam, I should say. And it, it just, the camera doesn't do it justice, because when you're there, it really gives you the size of what this lake was. It must have looked so cool when there was water in here. And it's, it's such a shame that now it's just a piece of land that the state owns just kind of slowly falling apart. It hasn't gotten there yet, because like I said, and like you've seen, the buildings look so nice, yet the state's kind of just like, ah, you know, that's not the mountains, and there's no skiing. It probably didn't make as much money as they want to have happen, but, I mean, people who live on the border of Kansas and Colorado, they don't want to drive all the way over to the mountains. It was probably nice to have something of this size with the amenities and services that they had here close by. I mean, it's not all about money. I mean, there were people that had businesses here, you know, bait shops and everything of the sort. And once this lake closed, so did their businesses, their livelihoods. But governments don't think about that. They don't care what it affects. They just care about what money is coming in from it. I mean, look at that. That's a cool little floating dock there. I'm assuming the staircase probably moved with it as well. And then here's the boat ramp. Like I said, in perfect condition. Could use that tomorrow. Fill it up with water, clear some of the trees out of the way. You got a lake. Done. I feel like the state of Colorado used Kansas's you know, they were complaining that 4 billion gallons of water wasn't getting to them as an excuse to say, hey, 
we can finally get our hands off of this park and not waste any money on it. And we'll just turn it into a wildlife park and pretend it never existed. And that's, it's just, it's sad to see that. Because, you know, spent two hours walking around here. It is peaceful. Even have some of the educational boards still around. These look really cool. They look like they were probably 80s, 90s possibly. With the color scheme and how they look. Uh, fish cleaning station. So you clean the fish out. Throw the guts or whatever bones into the grinder. Obviously the grinder is gone. They probably sold that. That's probably the only thing they sold out of it. Because, you know, gave them money. <laughs> it's just, it's really sad to see such a beautiful piece of land not being utilized for what it could be utilized for. We have the pipe here for the grinder. That's like the only like the noticeable thing you could see from it. But this is one of my favorite places. This place looks is so cozy, and it looks like it on camera too. It's a little amphitheater, or I'm sure they did events, shows, things for kids and so forth. But you got the trees all the way around here. It's like its own little nook. And then, of course, when the wind's going through these pine trees, it just sounds so awesome. And then we have the last pages of events that were going on at the state park. Some advertisements, fight the bite. Some geocaching stuff. And then this was a, a plaque on a rock at the park. And then the dirt road leading to the park itself. And so we'll kind of cycle through some pictures I took to wrap this video up. But just want to, you know, put out some other topics that I want to discuss before we wrap up this video. So like I said earlier with the fact that I think Colorado just wanted an excuse to get rid of the state park because of the location. It's not in the mountains. There's no ski towns. It doesn't bring in enough money. And the reason I say that is because... As you can tell, it's a dirt road. I've never been to a state park where it's a dirt road to get to it. And I've been to many of them, you know, South Dakota, Nebraska, Wyoming, you name it, all over the place. So obviously this is, was already an underfunded park to begin with. Um, I mean, dirt roads, some of the roads inside the park itself were also dirt or gravel. Uh, there were only a few places where it was actually a paved road. So, I mean, it's, it's just weird to me that, I don't know if I said this before, but the visitor center that you saw in the beginning, I'll probably have the picture up here again, that was $9 million, and I think that was built in 2003 or four, maybe even 2002. So just a year before the Supreme Court ruling, and then eight or nine years before they closed the whole park itself. So it was just like, you put money into it by building this cool looking visitor center and then you don't put any more money into it. You're like, oh, why did we do that? Let's just close it. I mean, it's just, you can keep talking about it and it's so frustrating. Uh, I'm glad people are still going to it. I mean, it's free now because there's, you know, you don't pay anything anymore. Uh, but there was somebody on a dirt bike. There were some other people still camping there uh, with their RVs and trailers and so forth. So it's nice to see that people are still going to it. I don't blame them. If it was closer, I'd probably be there a ton. I mean, it's just, it's such a relaxing place. So it, it's sad that the state doesn't see the benefit of having a state park on the eastern part of the state, close to Kansas and Nebraska, Wyoming, even put Oklahoma there, because it wasn't that far away from that either. Before we wrap up, I do want to say one thing. In 2020, the county that this land is sitting on wanted to purchase the land from the state and make, you know, horseback riding trails, get some other stuff in there, you know, trails around that people can walk on as well, open up the visitor center again, have volunteers from the, you know, neighboring cities, and just make it a vibrant, enjoyable place to go to again. You know, have those amenities and camping and so forth to get people back have more traffic go through these little towns that are around there that were dependent on the state park 12 years ago, you know? And, of course, two years later, it's still owned by the state. So, apparently, for whatever reason, the state could care less about this land, but they don't want to give it to 
a county that actually wants to do something with it and give more tourists to come through here. I just, I don't understand the philosophy of it, but what can you do? Thought I'd share it with you. It's a beautiful location. If you're ever around the eastern part of Colorado, I highly recommend going there. You will be amazed by how peaceful and nice it is. Because like I said, we're starting to run out of these types of places in the U.S. Everything's getting expanded. We're building houses all over the place and apartment complexes and gas stations. And we're starting to forget about the nice open areas where you can just get away from that. 